negative light, revealing it to be incompetent and powerless. And their response to the Abyssinian crisis only furthered that perception and that view. The League's response to the Abyssinian crisis showed that they were willing to negotiate with aggressors and even give in to aggressors, something that went completely against their goals and ideals. Furthermore, Mussolini completely undermined their decision and the League was powerless to stop him. Or, more accurately, the League depended on its members and its members refused to take action. This proved its illegitimacy and showed that the members were truly only concerned with diplomatic relations and their own self-interest. The League lost all authority in the eyes of the public and with the League's decline, the rest of Europe lost their reservations because they did not have to worry about facing consequences for any of their actions. They were free to do as they liked without supervision and without repercussion. This was a crucial factor in Mussolini's decision to leave the League in 1937 and take over Albania in 1939, and also in Hitler's decisions to occupy the Rhineland in 1936 and join together with Austria to form Anschluss in 1938, Eight, both of which were expressly forbidden in the Treaty of Versailles. These decisions were all major factors in the Second World War. The actions of the League also had another severe consequence. The League's sanctions failed in their purpose to hinder Mussolini's invasion into Abyssinia, but succeeded in, in making Mussolini feel rebuffed. Mussolini looked elsewhere for allies, towards Hitler and Nazi Germany. Italy and Germany signed the Rome-Berlin Axis in 1936, the Pact of Steel in 1939, and the Tripartite Act in 1940. Essentially, the Abyssinian crisis allied Mussolini and Hitler together. This alliance played a major role in all of their decisions after 1935, and indeed, in the inception of the Second World War. For example, Mussolini's decision to leave the League in 1937 was fueled by the fact that his ally, Hitler, had left the League in 1933. Furthermore, Hitler made his decision to invade Poland in, in September 1939 and begin World War II because he was counting on the Pact of Steel to secure Italian help. In addition to securing a German-Italian alliance, the Abyssinian crisis also greatly affected Mussolini's public image, both nationally and internationally. In Italy, the people felt that Mussolini's invasion of Abyssinia had restored their pride and overcome the humiliation of the 1896 defeat. Thus, Italy saw a revival of national pride and a surge of nationalism and support for Mussolini after the invasion was successful. The Time magazine wrote in an article in their July 20th, 1936 edition that Italians are not ashamed but proud and happy about Ethiopia. In fact, According to The Rape of Ethiopia, 1936, a book by A.J. Barker, when Mussolini spoke to the jubilant crowds after their success, the crowds would not let him go. Ten times they recalled Mussolini to the balcony and cheered and waved while the boys of various fascist youth organizations sang the newly composed Hymn of the Empire. This was the height of popularity for fascism and for Mussolini. His strong, positive public image in Italy meant that he could count on the support of both the public and the Italian military. This meant that he would be able to focus on his plans without having to worry about public response, riots or rebellions. In contrast to Mussolini's national public image being very positive, the international reception to the Abyssinian invasion was very negative. In Britain, the Hor-Laval Pact horrified the, horrified the public 
and a wave of indignation spread across the country. The Secretary of State for War, Duff Cooper, wrote, During my experience of politics, I have never witnessed so devastating a wave of public opinion. Articles and editorials in the Times denounced the pact, and the public sent letter after letter to the government. A cartoon published in the Evening Standard on April 3, 1936, depicts Mussolini holding poison gas, surrounded by dead and wounded Abyssinians, saying, Bah! They were uncivilized savages without ideals. Clearly meant to be ironic, this cartoon sums up the international feeling about Mussolini, an uncivilized savage without ideals, a barbaric aggressor. Before 1935, before the Abyssinian invasion, France and Britain were still looking at Italy as a potential ally against Germany. After the invasion, however, public opinion about the invasion and the Horleval Pact showed France and Britain that an alliance with Italy would be impossible. Since there was no in-between, no neutral ground, this basically confirmed that they would be standing against Italy in the future. Essentially, the Abyssinian crisis allied the major powers of Europe against Mussolini, forcing him to ally with Hitler, thus creating the alliance that began the Second World War. Although the evidence does support the fact that the Abyssinian crisis played a major role in the arrival of World War II, one could also suggest that the Treaty of Versailles truly resulted in many of the factors caused by the Abyssinian crisis. To begin with, one could say that the League of Nations was destined for failure and that the Abyssinian crisis was not the reason for its death. Why? Because America did not want to associate with the Treaty of Versailles and thus refused to join the League, dooming it to failure. It was inevitable and the Abyssinian crisis was simply the spark that led to its destruction. Furthermore, Italy was unhappy with the treaty and with France and Britain because they had reneged on their deal and given Italy less territory than promised. Clearly, they were not going to be allying themselves with France or Britain, and thus one could say that the German-Italian alliance was inevitable, regardless of the Abyssinian crisis. Also, Mussolini allied with Hitler on the condition that their alliance would give Italy the land promised to him in the treaty. Additionally, Hitler's decisions to occupy the Rhineland and to form Anschluss with Austria were both prompted by the fact that he wanted to deliberately flout the unfair and unjustifiably harsh diktat, the Treaty of Versailles. As you can see, the majority of the factors that were prompted by the Abyssinian crisis of 1935-1936 could also have been caused by the Treaty of Versailles, 1921. The failure of the League of Nations, the German-Italian alliance, the occupation of the Rhineland, and the formation of Anschluss. These four factors, their causes are ambiguous. They could have been caused by the, by the Abyssinian crisis or by the Treaty of Versailles. However, the Treaty of Versailles was more of a long-term cause, while the Abyssinian crisis was more short-term, more instant. Think of it as building a campfire. The Treaty of Versailles is the piling of the wood for the eventual fire of the Second World War, and the Abyssinian crisis is the immediate spark that lit the flames. What played a more major role? It is difficult to say because the historiography is a tangled web where one thing leads to another in an infinite circle. Clearly, however, the Abyssinian crisis did play an extensive role in the war and thus, A.J.P. Taylor and James Joel's theory can be considered correct.
The Abyssinian Crisis of 1935-1936 had a significant impact on the inception of the Second World War. And that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Oh, as a side note, I hope you guys know that with the cartoons, I meant no dis disrespect to the people or the places involved. I am fully aware of how horrific these incidents were. I was just I was just trying to keep it interesting for the viewers and I hope I did. Thanks for watching. Bye.